Good morning. My name is Reverend Garland Higgins. Welcome to Sunday School at Antioch AME Church. I thank you for joining in with me today as we talk about the topic temptation. And what a perfect topic that, that is for this time of year in dealing with COVID-19. And so our subject is how can I overcome temptation? The guiding scripture today will be from Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. And it reads, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, that is the gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter, verse 41. And here we are in times of suffering when people wish they knew the future and they would be able to tell when this coronavirus is going to end. And sometimes we're trying to understand the reason for our anguish. And here we are walking through the wilderness with Jesus. And in this particular time, Jesus knew what was coming ahead of him as he took this journey. He used Peter's drowsiness to warn him about the kinds of temptation that he would soon face. So the important lesson was to keep watch and pray because temptation strikes us where we're most vulnerable and temptation can have very subtle um, ways of getting to us without us not even recognizing what is going on. The enemy can be very crafty and very sneaky. And in temptation, we want to make sure that we are prayed up, that we are watchful, and that we are alert so that we will not be swayed in the wrong direction. So I just want to start off by reading the handout that I have for us this morning, which says, A troubling addiction, a betraying thought, a compromising situation, temptation comes in many forms, sparking a fierce Winner takes all battle for our souls that has only one goal, to cause us to stray off the path that leads to godly living. And we all know the word tells us that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's it. That is his main purpose, to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, is temptation sin? No, temptation is not sin. If temptation were indeed sin, then Jesus would not have led a sinless life. But as the Bible says, Jesus was tempted in all things, yet without sin. And still, temptation should not be taken lightly. That's because it is the gateway to sin. Temptation is often strongest when we're at our weakest. In fact, the longer we allow it to brew in our thoughts, the more dangerous temptation becomes. Therefore, we must learn to recognize temptation and learn and work hard at keeping it in check with God being our helper. And see, with temptation brewing in our thoughts, we also want to keep in mind that on first Sundays, when we recite the general confession and we talk about we sin in thought, word, and deed, temptation begins with a thought. And that thought will eventually begin to come out of our mouths if we're not careful. And if we're really thrown off guard, what, we come, what words come out of our mouths then become actions. And so we saw Jesus walk through the wilderness. And Jesus was the one who was not able to be tempted to do anything wrong because he lived a sinless life. But we are not able to say that. We live in this flesh, as the word tells us, that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We live in a flesh that it is difficult to try to uh, resist temptation on our own. So we always have to be prayed up no matter what. We have to begin our day, as Pastor Simmons had talked about, praying an additional 40 minutes every morning during this 40-day Lenten season to help us and equip us with what God gives us in order to resist temptation. And so we have to be prayerful and we have to be watchful. And now let's talk about what's so tempting. Temptation is one of the enemy's most powerful schemes for misleading God's people. It causes us to focus on the passing pleasures of sin instead of the rich rewards of serving God with a pure heart. The Bible says each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. And then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Thus, our 
own lusts give temptation its power over us. And the only person that we want to have power over us is God, the Holy Spirit, empowering us to be able to have the strength to resist whatever is going on around us. And here we are, we're in this time of COVID-19, we're watching the news, we're seeing everything that's going on and all of the negativity that's happening around us. It's easy to be tempted to fall into to the trap of, of, of being negative and thinking that this situation is never going to end or uh, falling into the, the trap of depression because we're home and we're isolated and there's no one there with us. That's the time when we have to pick up the phone or we're, we're praying and asking God for direction and really focusing on the Holy Spirit to guide us through so we don't fall deep down into the trap of despair. So also temptation says it's okay to sin just a little bit, but nothing could be further from the truth. In God's eyes, there's no small or big sins. Sin is sin is sin, and we have to call it what it is. And the wages of sin is always death. And when we're tempted, we often convince ourselves that we can hide our sin. But as men and women of God, since the beginning of time, have discovered there is no hiding from God. Thou hast searched me and know me, David said, even before there is a word on my tongue. Behold, O Lord, thou dost know it all. From the 139th Psalm, verses 1 and 4. Our tempting thoughts also try to undermine or twist the meaning of the scriptures. When Jesus was led up by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, the tempter twisted God's word in an attempt to lead Jesus astray. But because of who Jesus is, he was not able to be led astray because Jesus is sinless. But here we are, sinful beings. Um, we have to fight at the urge of being tempted to do wrong. Temptation tries to silence the voice of the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus promised to send to guide us into all truth. By tuning out the Holy Spirit's voice, we fool ourselves into thinking that we can make it on our own. And there is nothing in this world that we can do without God's help. We are not operating in our strength at any given moment, whether it's using the faculties that God has blessed us with in order to be able to, to have this Sunday school lesson right now, or having our extremities to be able to handle or to be able to walk and do things and enjoy the earth that God has blessed us with. So we know that it is because of the Holy Ghost. It is because of Jesus Christ himself. We cannot fool ourselves and think that we have done this on our own and that we can do anything in our own strength because that is not true. The word tells us that's not true. And also, as we continue to live in this flesh, we learn that that is not true. We need God every single inch, every single moment of the day. But the way out of temptation can be difficult to resist. But God has not left us as helpless victims of temptation. He has promised a way of escape to all who will trust in him. See, we have to trust in God and put all of our weight on him. Because no matter what is happening, God is the one that we can look to in our times of adversity and our times of struggle. Not to the left or to the right, but looking and focusing, keeping our focus on the one who takes care of us, the one who sustains us, the one who guides us, no matter how difficult times may be. We thank God for who he is and all that God does for us and with us and helps us through every difficult situation. And now I want to be able to answer the question, how can I overcome temptation? Battling temptation is a daily walk. Even the most loyal followers of Jesus Christ can be tempted. And that's why the Lord's Prayer instructs us to ask God to lead us not into temptation. When we're reciting the Lord's Prayer, it's important that we pay attention to what we're saying. Because sometimes we say it so much, we're just going on through the motions and not really realizing the power of that prayer. But when we're asking God to lead us not into temptation, 
God hears us and he helps us through those difficult times when we are being tempted and is able to point out in those subtle moments when the enemy is trying to take over and pounce on us when we least expect it. So the following principles can help you fight and win against temptation. And the first one is be honest with God. At the time of temptation, don't debate the issue. The longer we wrestle with tempting thoughts, the closer we get to committing sin. And flee from temptation as soon as you are able to recognize it. Of, of course, with God being able to help, help us through. We have to be honest with God and, and, and tell God, this is what I need help with. And not be in denial with what's happening to us. Because sometimes when we, we don't want to acknowledge our weaknesses, we're not being honest with God. And we have to be honest with ourselves. God knows our weakness, but God wants to make sure that we know what our weaknesses are. And then the second thing is to recognize your enemies. Understand that this is serious business. You are engaged in a battle for your very soul. There's an enemy, the devil, who prowls about like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And this enemy will use any temptation to draw you away from God. And then the third one is to resist through Jesus Christ. Go to God and receive mercy and grace in your time of need. Remember, you are never alone in your struggle. God is always walking right beside you. Satan tries to discourage us through isolation, telling us our temptation is unique. And that's simply not true. Because we always have to keep in mind that whatever we're dealing with, somebody is going through the same thing or more somewhere else. We are never taking this journey alone. Anytime, ever. So know that Satan's job is just to steal, kill, and destroy But with the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to overcome temptation. And then the last thing is we want to give God thanks. In the midst of the struggles, we want to thank God for the opportunity to experience the victory through him. And thank God for providing a way of escape. Because it's in those moments when we're able to escape, that's when we recognize, I don't even know how I was able to get out of that. I don't even know when I got out of that. We didn't recognize it because it was the Holy Spirit moving on our behalf. And we then noticed, I did not do this on my own. I did not do it in my own strength. So as you pray, if you're facing a difficult temptation right now, or if you've already fallen into temptation and it's resulting in sin, you can find freedom and victory. So turn to God right now and pray. So this is at the point of the end of our Sunday school lesson. And let us now pray. Almighty and sovereign God, we thank you so much for this day that you have made. We thank you now, God, for those who are watching on live stream. We thank you, God, for their presence. And now may your Holy Spirit rest in their homes and abide, God, and just rule in their hearts and in their minds, allowing them to know that you will never leave them nor forsake them. That, God, in the midst of the tempting, the temptations, that you are right there moving the devil out of the way, showing us who really does have the power. And, God, we say thank you right now for your love, your grace, and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say, Amen.